So I've just bought some new end mills. And by just bought, I mean I bought them two months ago and I've been waiting for them to turn up ever since. Going by the packaging, you can probably tell that these are just imports. I have a bunch of name brand end mills, but to be completely honest, I've been pretty impressed by the quality of some of the import end mills that I've been getting, at least compared to the quality that they used to be. Now this time I bought some roughing end mills because I wanted to see what the quality was like, and at the same time, I also picked up some solid carbide end mills. Now my mill probably isn't rigid enough nor powerful enough to run these at the optimal fees that they're designed for, but I am curious to see what they can do. Plus my mini lathe isn't really suited for carbide and I've gotten away with using it for years. Plus I'm also interested in what an $8 carbide end mill can do. Now I could hold these end mills in my ER20 collet holders, but since I have solid carbide, I wanted to try something new. For a very long time, I have wanted to try some heat shrink tooling or shrink fit tooling. I've seen it under different names. If you've never seen shrink fit tooling, it's just another method to hold carbide end mills. We all know that when you heat metal, it expands and when you cool it, it contracts. So in theory, we can use these characteristics and make an end mill holder. What we need to do is make a tool holder with a hole that's slightly too small for an end mill to fit in at room temperature, but when we heat it up, the end mill is able to fit in the hole because it expands, and when it cools, it contracts and presses on the end mill and holds it into position. And in theory, that seems pretty straightforward, and well, it should be pretty straightforward, except for the really tight tolerances that we need to hit. But we'll work that out as we go. Now the material I'm going to go for is some cold drawn 1214 steel. For a tool holder like this, I would have preferred to use a high tensile steel, but this is what I have on hand. For this specific tool holder, I'll be cutting off a pretty long piece of stock, and the reason for that will be explained later. I'll first turn down the end that will fit into the spindle collet. I'll face the end and I'll start turning the outside. Now I could really tell that the lathe was struggling with this material and as it turned out, it was the carbide insert. The insert was pretty old and worn down, so I swapped it out for a new one. And you can really tell how much better the new insert is cutting. Not only can I push the lathe even harder, but the results that I get from cutting is a lot better. And that's an okay fit on the collet. I measured it to be about 20 microns under the target, but that's just within tolerance. I swapped the chuck out for an independent four-jaw chuck, and then I dialed it in. I then took the outside down to 22mm. Now I left a flange to help me hold the tool holder while I heat it. Next I'll spot and then drill the hole for the end mill. Now the most important part here is that the hole is perfectly on size, and to do that I'll use a boring bar to bore it to size. 
Now the size that I'm aiming for is about 30 microns smaller than the shank diameter of the end mill and that should give us the press fit that we need once it cools down. And having checked, it's roughly in line with the other tool holders of this type. Now doing this is going to be a bit hit and miss. I don't have a bore gauge, nor do I have any snap gauges, and my good caliper doesn't have enough resolution. So to bore it to the correct diameter, I am putting all my trust into the hand wheel dials. And I really was hoping that the boring bar wasn't bending, which would result in a tapered hole and that wouldn't work. With the hole hopefully done and to size, I swapped out the cross slide to get the old compound back. I'll set the compound at a 5 degree angle and I'll turn down the holder. In doing this, I'm going to get a lot more clearance out of the tool holder. In fact, there isn't any other tool holder that I have that has this much clearance. In fact, it's one of the reasons why these are really popular on 5-axis CNC machines. And in fact, that's the only place that I've ever seen these in person. They can get into really tight spots without too much worry of crashing the tool holder. And it's also the reason why I'm making this tool holder in this specific shape. Aside from out of curiosity, I have a part that I need to machine in the future with a very tight clearance and this tool holder will be perfect for it. I am aware that I could use a long shank end mill, but this is a lot more fun to do and it's a lot cheaper. I'll clean up the taper with a file and then some 320 grit. And I forgot to cover the ways, so I'll have to give it a quick clean before I use the lathe. The final thing that I'll do is drill a hole through the shank to help vent any air trapped between the end mill and the bottom of the hole. And that is the tool holder done. I'm super happy with how it turned out. It actually looks really nice, although what really matters is how it works. And I really do hope that it works, it took a long time to make, and hopefully it's rigid enough. I don't think I've ever seen a shrink fit tool holder this small, so hopefully it is rigid enough. Now there is one thing I do want to mention before I start heating the tool holder. This end mill that I have here isn't really what you'd want to use for this type of application. It just isn't made to the correct tolerance. Everything is made to a tolerance, and end mills are the same. With this being an import of AliExpress, there is no tolerance mentioned. But if you measure it with a micrometer, you'll clearly see it's somewhere between 0.01mm below 10mm. Now I don't have a finer resolution micrometer, so I'll say it's 5 microns below 10mm. Thankfully I was aware of all of this before I made the tool holder, so I could account for that when I bored out the hole. If you want to properly do this and use off the shelf tool holders, you'd want to use an H6 tolerance end mill, and those are made for heat shrink tool holders. To heat up the shrink fit tool holder, I'll make up a bracket from a scrap piece of aluminium. I could bore a hole with the boring head, but I'll use this wood boring bit to make the correct sized hole. It's not really made for metal, but I've gotten away using wood tools on metal, or at least aluminium before in the past, without damaging them. I'll now heat up the tool holder. At times like this, I wish I had some map gas on hand, but butane will work. If you buy the name brand stuff, typically they'll sell you a heating unit too. It's just a bunch of induction coils that will heat it up in a few seconds, but butane will work, it'll just take a few minutes. Now after a while of heating, it was clear that this wasn't working. The top was expanding to the right diameter, but there was clearly a taper in the tool holder. It's clear that the boring bar was flexing ever so slightly. I've run into problems like this with this tool holder in the past, so I'm probably going to replace it with a solid carbide tool holder in the near future. 
If I really wanted no taper or next to no taper, I'd grind the hole, but my grinding setup won't work here. Now I did consider getting a reamer, but they wanted $100 for the size that I needed, and that really isn't worth it for one hole. I'll be using a method that I've seen once or twice on YouTube. I loaded up a broken end mill into a holder, and I positioned the end mill so the flute was horizontal. The cutting geometry is pretty similar to a boring bar, and it should be a lot more rigid than the boring bar that I was using. And it probably doesn't look like it's doing much, but there really isn't that much material to remove. And once again, I heated the tool up, and the end mill very easily went in about 90% of the way. There was clearly a bit of taper that I didn't remove, but that shouldn't be an issue. 90% of the way should be enough. Now the tool holder is pretty hot, so I'll give it about 30 minutes for it to cool down. Now the heat had discolored the tool holder, so I cleaned it up in the lathe. And that's the tool holder done. Next to an ER collet, you can really see the size difference. There is a lot more stick out compared to the ER collet, but I designed it this way because I need it when I mill apart in the future, and I really will be needing that clearance. I am aware that it will reduce rigidity, so I do need to account for that when I'm testing it. I've placed it in the mill, and first impressions are really good. Looking at it, I can't see any run out, and usually I can on camera, and that's a really good sign. The test indicator shows about 10 microns of run out, which is amazing for a homemade tool holder on a $600 lathe. Now the taper on the tool holder is featuring some run out. I think I picked it up when I put it in the scroll chuck to clean up the discoloured metal. I probably should have used the four jaw, but hopefully it shouldn't be an issue, but if it is an issue, I can always clean it up. I'll start off testing it in aluminium. Initially, I was running it a little bit too slow. I haven't run carbide in this size on this mill before, so I was testing it to see what speeds worked and what didn't work. And As I cranked up the RPM, the results got a lot better very quickly. Initially, it was pretty rough, but I learned that pretty much maxing out the RPM was the best way to go. Now the cuts were pretty good, but the finish wasn't amazing. I think the tool wobble in the taper was causing some vibration that was causing it. I wasn't getting it at low speeds, so I think it's the wobble in the taper. I swapped over to steel to see what I could get, and I was decently impressed with the cuts I could take. It's a 5mm depth of cut, and I think about 0.3mm step over, and I was pretty happy with it. With the RPM maxed out, it was really throwing out a good amount of chips. However, the surface wasn't that great. Another culprit that I found out was the drawbar. I never get it properly centered, and at 2000 RPM, it was causing some vibrations. And the second issue was obviously the taper. I took the tool back to the lathe, and I recut the taper, and then I went back and recut the aluminium. I found I could take the same depth of cuts and the same width of cuts, but the finish was a lot better. I'm also sure that the stick out is also a factor in the surface finish that I'm getting, but I really need the stick out to get the clearance. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this tool. It's been a good deal of fun making it, but to be honest, I'm not about to go out and swap all of my tooling for it. Plus, I'm not about to go out and swap all of my tooling to carbide. I prefer high speed steel on the mill, at least for the time being. And on a final note, I didn't mention it before, but these tool holders are designed for carbide. I've heard of people using high speed steel on them and it working, but it seems very risky. Carbide doesn't expand as much when you heat it than high speed steel, so the theory is when you want to remove the tool, you can heat it, the tool will expand, and the carbide will easily pop out. If you try this with high speed steel, they'll expand at similar rates and you can risk getting your tool stuck in the tool holder.
It's for that reason, plus the time it took for me to make it, plus the time that it takes to swap out the tooling, that I'm just not sold on this type of tooling for my situation. You'll probably see several of these tool holders pop up every now and then, but for the most part, I'm going to stick with ER collets and end mill holders. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.